Yeah. Now, it looks like he's slimmed down panel this week. We've got uh, David Jennings in midfield and we've got uh, Johnny Ward as well. How are you guys? You right? All good. Good. Basking in the glory of last week's wonderful tipping, Jenna. Charger Bridge, Tom. You kept the faith. I did, yeah. It was the most bizarre race to watch because for seven furlongs of the mile, it was excruciating. <laughs> it was painful. And then those last 100 yards, 50 Believe yards, in the 20 yards, it was just blissful. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I just look at during the week as well, talking about like what's been going on in the world. And Anton Griezmann's went out spending his uh, millions at Arcana Sales. So, you know, one of the biggest names in football coming into the horse racing world. It's quite a passion. Horse racing fans as well. Who do you think, who would you like to see as well as Griezmann in the, in the sort of winner's enclosure? Well, this is very topical at the moment. Oh, yeah? I think Tommy Fleetwood and Francesco Molinari, Mollywood, as they, become, as they became known in the Ryder Cup, I think they could start a trend. I think if they start buying horses now with the prefix Mollywood, you could have Mollywood Par, Mollywood Birdie, yeah. Mollywood Eagle. Mollywood bunker shot. This could go on for ages. They could start a trend. Possibly too long. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Mollywood Molly bunker shot would fit. <laughs> what about Mollywood? Oh, shite, it's gone into the trees. Wouldn't fit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and may get into trouble because of the profanities. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps. <laughs> That's okay. We've got a beeper. Uh, what about you, Johnny? Who would you like to see? I'd the like to see Roy role? Keane. Roy Keane, um, yeah. Preferably while not involved with the Irish team as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, we do that instead. We can Irish bring team. Martin O'Neill along as his uh, racing partner. But no, he'd be great because uh, everywhere he goes, like publicity follows him. And um, I think he'd, uh, he might sh he'd probably start giving out about a lot of aspects of racing as well. Which what about when, you know... It doesn't go to plan as a trainer and the trainer has to come in for that owner debrief and like Roy Keane is standing there having lost his nuts like or, the or what happens if the trainer's phone rings oh. whose phone is that yeah. Yeah. whose phone is that this, this would be this couldn't would be a have big with Aiden. Yeah. Um no it, Roy <laughs> yeah. and Aiden would be interesting yeah but um, I was once at Roscommon when uh, Ronan Keating had a winner um, and that was a bit strange because you could tell that he was uh wary of like interviews because I think I don't know if he was like split off from his wife or something at the time but he, he was definitely wary of the paparazzi okay. but instead he had to deal with like the racing post lad looking for an analysis quote after the third in Roscommon <laughs> and the trainer was uh, Tommy Sack if I remember rightly yeah Let's move on to the actual racing action. The final group one of the season in the UK. It is the uh, Virgin Fraternity Stakes coming at Doncaster at 4.05. For, for me, the racing post trophy. Um, Magna Grecia, obviously the big movie, was supplemented on Monday. Johnny, are you with the Aidan O'Brien faff here? I'm with Aidan O'Brien. I'm not with uh, Magna Grecia, even though he clearly does hold Circus Maximus in the run last uh, time at Newmarket. Um, the fact that he supplemented, um, it was a bit like Coolmore supplementing the filly against Clemmy um, the last time, which suggested that they weren't all that confident about Clemmy. Maybe it's the same with Circus Maximus, but he's around about 16 to 1. And when he won at Goran, I don't know if you remember, um, DJ, he was, as a lot of horses, two-year-olds do at Goran, they kind of edge badly left, kind of, because it's just such a wide track and yeah. so undulating. He looks seriously green, and I thought at Newmarket he still looked quite green. Now, he can't beat Magna Grecia on that form, but he kept at it quite well. This is going to be a stiffer test. And as I was saying beforehand, if Magna Grecia weren't running here, what price would he be? He'd be way shorter. He's out of Duntle, like So I think first fall out of Duntle, yeah. who memorably was thrown out of um, the Matron back in the day when trained by David Watson. She's in and she was out. And yeah. She was but um, pedigree to die for. And I, I think this horse is progressing. I think he still has a lot to offer. And you never know with these Galileos so how much more they can give. He's my e choice selection. Maybe even a without kind of selection. Yeah. Well, perhaps. yeah. Uh, what about you, Dan? I think, I think he'll finish third, but I think it's a two-horse race. Magna Grecia and Phoenix of Spain. I think Phoenix of Spain is a little bit underestimated. Like, traded quite short against two darn hot last time. Um, James Doyle went a little bit early, I thought. Obviously, Spencer's not going to do likewise. He's going to be waiting until the last possible moment to play his hand. But his form is rock solid. The York win is solid. The run the last time against two darn hot is obviously the best juvenile we've seen this season. That's that's pretty strong form. I think he's probably the play without Magna Grecia. But I chat to Aiden during the week doing the news story for the race, and I got the impression made that Magna Grecia was their number one by a considerable margin. Maybe I'm wrong. You could sneak into third at a big price, but I thought it was a two horse race, and at the prices, maybe Phoenix of Spain without. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, let's move on to the action at Cheltenham, of course, the showcase meeting to get us uh, underway there. We'll start with this Masson Holdings hurdle, which is actually uh, cut up a little bit, but we're decent odds on for this. Yes, and uh, you, you won't like this now, Johnny, because I'm not sure if you're a fan of the horse, but if people are watching now, I think there could be an anti-post play for the champion hurdle in this race. And it's not Radician. It, it is Radician. It is Radician. It is Radician. He's a short price favourite, but I think he's as close to a certainty as you're going to get. I think he's exceptional. 
I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. He flopped in the in the triumph hurdle when he wasn't right. His performances prior to that at Kempton were incredible. He beat Malaya by seven lengths. Malaya won next time out. I think he's a very, very, very good horse. And every year, Johnny, we see the champion hurdle cutting up really bad to six and seven runners in the last couple of years. Yeah. This is a horse that is going to have one aim and one aim only. He's like Score Royal a couple of years ago won this race for Alan King. I just think he's one that's crept in under the radar that could continue to progress and mop up races like this all season. Another it's a huge, catches. Yeah, he's another huge price for the champion hurdle. I could see him getting there and going well in it. And if he's to do that, Tom, he has to win this on the bridle. Yeah, he, he, yeah he has to Apparently his, his jumping has improved no end. So. Okay, well that's good to hear as well. Uh, Johnny? I'd, I'd be astonished if he won the champion hurdle, being honest. Like, I mean, no, he I, won't beat Sam Crow, but I mean, is yeah. if you back him now with a huge price each way, you could ha be sitting on a nice... Sam Crow definitely going to end up there. Yeah, yeah I would have thought so. Um, which kind of foils my anti post bets, which is Saldier, which is uh, actually also a four-year-old. Yeah, um, nice yeah. Radishan has to give eight pounds to Philip Hobbs' horse, who admittedly is nowhere near as flashy. The race he won the last year was moderate enough, but um, the time before that, he was second to the good Henderson horse, who was actually... Due to run here, but was scratched and probably would we have, have been dream. Uh, would have been probably favourite. Yeah, um, you know, Philip Hobbs' horses are actually in pretty good form yeah, at the moment. Big, yeah. Um, you know, and he he was speaking up his runners at during the week uh, for this weekend and just at the weights, um, at the prices and at the weights, I'm going to take Radisson on. But he's the class act, but it's his first run back, and you'd be imagining he come off the run a bit, giving him eight pounds. Things are like eleven to four, four to seven discrepancy there. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Let's move on to the uh, Rand Excel handicap chase coming at uh, 10 past three. You've got like, say, Big Mart, Foxdale Hill, Modus here kind of disputing favouritism. Do you think it's between those three or you see something like that? Oh, sure, me and Modus go back a long way, unfortunately. Uh, and me, actually. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember, Johnny was mad in one year for the Greatwood. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. And how he didn't win the race, I will never know. But that, I think that was his first run of the season that year. Perhaps he had ran maybe at Ascot prior to that I and ran well. Yeah, I think he had had a run. I well, wouldn't be worried about... Well, the key thing with Modus, I think you need to catch him fresh. All yeah. his good form is fresh. And I have a theory with him as well. My theory is that in this grade, he has so much natural ability. And when he's in this grade, he can cope. But when he stepped up in grade and he actually has to try, I think he just chucks in the towel. But I think he gets away with it here. Like, he's, he's rated 146. I think he's slightly better than that. I think this time of year, around Cheltenham where he's won already, I think he's a good horse. And... I think he's probably going to be overpriced because people will go, ah, Modus, he's a rogue. But his win ratio was actually quite good yeah. in the last two years. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it is going to be Modus, even though I hate him with a passion. Right, oh, are you, you with can't, him? You can't, you can't, hate, you can't him. hate him. Yeah, can't he's, hate yeah. him. Um, I, I'm with him as well. You know, he, he does, he's, he's by motivator who, like, I can't think of many um, jumps horses, no. certainly chasers and motivators no. had. Um, but as a novice, he jumped well. He loves Cheltenham, in fairness to him. He's very good form here from even his days in the bumper. And um, if, if, if there's any money for him at all, if he's solid in the bet, and he's pretty well handicapped in a race like this, and Paul Nichols should have him right. Um, there is one of these in him, definitely. He's a very, yeah, very talented so. horse. He's on 146 as well. Yeah. Like, you'd think he's... He is a 150 plus yeah, horse. and the stronger the gallop, the better. Um, but he does jump well, in fairness. Like, and he's, I think his story is yet to be told over fences. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, it's a busy old uh, day of racing on Saturday. <laughs> I could definitely write a few stories about <laughs> Yeah. Where, where else are you going to get some winners then on Saturday? Oh, I'm sure. I fancy so many horses, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. We'll, we'll stay at, Ch we'll stay Cheltenham. at Cheltenham. Uh, I did Gordon Elliott stable tour and he was adamant that Dinons was going to go for this race at Cheltenham. And he, he's run up a sequence for Tim O'Driscoll and he's a pretty good novice and I think he'll win that novice hurdle at, at uh, 4.20. Later on in the 4.55... Lord, holy God, move with the times has to win this race. Like he's, uh, he was virgin. He on, me last he, year. He was virgin on, on, on some of the best novices last season. He was top class. You know, he, he didn't win, so he retains his novice status for this season. He's a very good horse that should do Never really well this him season. As a chaser, though, I just don't like the way he jumps. No, he's a bit, he's a bit kind of square over his fences. But uh, I thought he was, he was certainly good enough to win that over at Newbury in the first race. I cannot wait for heartwarming. Um, very, very, very unlucky behind Sergei Prokofiev last time at Newmarket. Frankie de Tori was booked. And it was almost a carbon copy of Sharjah Bridge last week yeah. in that the gaps weren't there. But Frankie, I'd say, had, had good rides later on in the card. And it could have been the day after maybe the arc was on. <laughs> or maybe he had good rides. And it was just like, ah, sure. Gap didn't open. What about it? <laughs> what about Whereas it? you'd love to see him just try and get the gap. <laughs> um, I think she's a really good filly. She's only rated 94. I think we haven't seen the best of her. The problem is she's stepping up to sixth from five. 
Um, David Probert, Probert takes over in the saddle. And uh, stamina is a little bit of a concern, but she's a really good filly. She's eighth with Labrooks. That's a big price. She'll go off a bit seven to two. Good stuff. Johnny, anything else for you on Saturday? S Silver Code. Um, the last oh, yeah. time Friend I watched... of the show. Last time I watched his horses with you was we were heading home from Champions Weekend. I had him tipped and... Um, I don't know how he didn't win. Did but everything but win. In any event. Them that day, yeah. yeah. Uh, well backed. Then he went to Cork and that was a messy race. Forget yeah. about that. Wasn't his form. Uh, the boy Slattery claiming off the top weight here. This is not a strong race and loves the course and distance. Joe Murphy, he's a bit like Eddie Lynham. Did nothing all year really and yeah, just horses are now though. flying it like and um, finishing the season strongly. So Good stuff. Silver cold at Leverson. Yeah. Okay, doke. Let's move on to the Sunday action then. Aintree, obviously the highlight we have here. Old Round Chase the Money's Garden, Old Round Chase. Uh, up at uh, three o'clock. What do you fancy in this one? A fancy flying angel. Um, had another wind up. Goes well at Aintree. Um, just, I, I think w this is the type of race where a horse who might never win a, gr gr a grade one but could mop up these type of races. I think it's a perfect race for like Money's Garden. <laughs> yeah, like Money's Garden, exactly. <laughs> Aptly named. Um, I, I, I think, I just think he's good enough to win a race like this. I'd say he's been trained for the race um, and he ticks plenty of boxes. Cloudy Dream, I think, is worth taking on and value at risk. Like, value at risk has been promising for the last 15 years in a row. I don't know when he's ever going to fulfill his promise. So, yeah, it is Flying Angel for me. Yeah, Johnny? Yeah, um, like countdown, yeah, here, here's mine, yeah, same thing, and uh, in, in fairness to Twister, his horses are in decent form, the second wind up, this horse is more than enough ability to win a race like this, Cloudy Dream, um, he ran a blind on the race last year, I think this is his trip, and he was just found out a bit maybe at the top level, I'm just not sure the move to Don McCain is going to reap dividends, his horses are in middle enough form, I don't think he's had a winner in the last fortnight, um, and obviously he's, what is he, 157, first run back, Donald McCain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks well. Yeah. He looks well. Um, older than Ginger. But um, yeah, I just, just like watching Brief. It's a lovely, lovely, typical grey kind of that you'd warm to jump straight. But um, I do, I, I, I'm going to, this is probably the only time I'll back Flying Angel this year, but I think this might be the time to catch him. It's a winnable enough race, actually. Yeah, it does look that way. Anything else on the, uh, on the entry card? No, although I did like. Um, you can call her that is is third reserve at Wexford in a handicap hurdle. Um, she's about <laughs> sixty pounds well in on her chase mark. It's okay. Kind of crazy stuff, but uh, she probably won't get in. Holy motivation, meanwhile, is top weight, and she should take a hell of a lot of beating. She looks like uh, she just has to run to her form. Yeah, we got Wexford and Galway as well, and Wincanton at the week on Sunday as well. What else for you? Yeah, on and Sunday? the two twenty five at Aintree. I think three Musketeers is still very well handicapped over hurdles for Harry and Dan Skelton. Um, just a horse, flat track horse who I think goes, will go well at Aintree. And I think over hurdles, first time out, could be the time to catch him. I like a few at Galway. The opening maiden hurdle is fascinating. Getaway Katie May makes her debut for oh, Jamie yeah. McManus and runs against Tin, Tin Tangle, who Gordon Elliott Easy, holds in high regard. Yeah, a lot of tees there. Uh, blow by Blow makes his chasing debut in the 105, a race that's been won by Don Cossack and presenting Percy in the last couple of years. But I think the most... He's made for chasing though, isn't he? Like, no, I, I, know yeah. he, I know he won that race in Cheltenham, but like, he's just a chaser. And an interesting like. thing that Gordon said in the stable tour, he said everybody seems to think he's a big, strap and imposing horse that's a real winter horse. And he said he thinks he's much better on better ground. Well, he's Cheltenham form. Yeah, so, so that's yeah. obviously interesting. And the one I think is fascinating is in the 140, 2A per me has moved from Mouse Morris to Noel Mead. Sean Flanagan takes the ride. It's rated 128. Going back to some of his early season form when he was running in grade twos last season makes him look pretty well handicapped off a mark of 128. I don't think it's a particularly good race. A small field. And I think 2A per me. Form figures of 45587 may make him a bigger price than he should be. Okay, Doug. You know, I, I actually like one at Wincanton. Would you believe that? Yeah, okay. 245 Wincanton, Ridge, Ridge Wayne Flyer, Wind Up. Had a bad Harry run. Fly, Fry? Uh, ex Harry Fly, now Paul Nichols, oh. Wind Up. Uh, top weight in an ordinary looking race. Yeah, Ridgeway Flyer, 245. Right, let's move on to our best bets of the weekend then. Go on, Johnny, start with you. Give us a treble as well and the uh, best bet. Yeah, the, the best bet's probably Silver Code, um, and I'm going to put that in with uh, Modus. And yeah, why not put in um, at, 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 the, at the massive price that we have, um, the horse whose name I forget in the, in the old racing post? Circus Maximus. Circus Maximus. Circus Maximus. Circus Maximus. The, the, the son of Duntle. Um, it's a bit ambitious now, but I think, did you say some lad had 150 to one shot in it? Yeah, the meter who won at Chelmsford uh, on Thursday, Thursday night. Um, yeah, 150 to one winner, and he had it in Lucky 63 and clicked like 300 the, grand. The meter? Yeah, the meter won at 
150 well, to 1. Oh, that's the name of a horse. Yeah, oh. and, yeah of course you've never person. heard it. He was 150 to 1, for God's sake. I thought it was the name of the person. No, the but the guy left had like 6 running. quid on and he won 300 grand. Included in his multiple was that 150 to 1 winner. Happy days. That never happened to him. Yeah. Well, I don't put 150 to 1 shots in anything, to be fair. <laughs> okay, what are your best bets of the weekend? Uh, I'll, be, I'll be flabbergasted if Radisian doesn't win at Cheltenham, so he'd be my banker. Um, I also like heartwarming at Newbury in that group three. And uh, the other one I like is on Sunday, I will go for 2A per me. Okay. Well, I'm going to put that theory to the test. Remember we saw Perfect Tapatina win the first time? We're like, oh, he's a stone and a half well in. So we'll find out in Sunday at 10 to 5. Uh, Masaf as well in the 4.15 at Leopard Sound and also going to stick in Ridgeway Flyer at Wincanton on Sunday in the 2.45. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week.